this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College in York, Pennsylvania. And this is part two of my podcast, reviewing the bones and bony landmarks of the facial bones. Our focus here in part two is on the jaw, and specifically the maxillae and mandible. The maxillae are a pair of bones that form the upper jaw bone and they fuse together around weeks 10 to 12 during embryonic development. A cleft palate is the result of a failure of these maxillae bones to unite. Like the sphenoid bone, the maxillae are integral keystone bones that articulate with many bones of the skull. They form the floor of the nasal cavity and part of the orbital floors and lateral walls of the orbit. They also form most of the hard palate, which is the bony roof of the mouth formed by the palatine processes and horizontal plates of the palatine bones. Okay, let's take a look at some of the major bony landmarks of the maxillae. The palatine processes are flat horizontal projections of the maxillae that forms most of the hard palate. The alveolar processes are ridge-like arches that contain the alveoli which are the tooth sockets for the upper maxillary teeth. Just inferior to the orbit is an opening called the infraorbital foramen, which allows passage of the infraorbital blood vessels and nerves, which is a branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve 5. Another foramen located just posterior to the incisor teeth is the incisive foramen, which allows passage of the greater palatine blood vessels as well as the nasopalatine nerve. Another opening associated with the maxillae is the inferior orbital fissure, which is located between the maxillae and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. The lower jaw bone is the mandible, which is the largest as well as the strongest of the facial bones. And besides the auditory ossicles, which are the tiny bones within the ear, the mandible is the only skull bone that is movable. The body is the curved portion of the mandible that contains the mandibular teeth. And just like the maxillary teeth, the mandibular teeth are found within the alveoli, the sockets created by the alveolar processes. The parts of the mandible extending superiorly from the body are the rami. The angles are the areas of the mandible where each ramus extends away from the body. There are two processes on each ramus, the posterior condylar process and the anterior coronoid process. The tooth-like coronoid process is an insertion point for the temporalis muscle. The rounded condylar process articulates with the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ. The mandibular notch is the curved cutout region in between the two processes. There's a pair of foramina located on the mandible, the mental foramen and the mandibular foramen. The mental foramen is located on the chin in an area just under the second premolar tooth. It allows passage of the mental nerve and associated blood vessels. On the medial surface of each ramus, you'll find the mandibular foramen. It allows passage of the inferior alveolar nerve and its associated blood vessels. Both of these foramina are also sites used by dentists when injecting anesthetics. Okay, that concludes my review of the facial bones. I hope you found these podcasts helpful in your studies of skeletal anatomy. And stay tuned for more anatomy podcasts coming soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.